Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Elise Venik, and I welcome you today on Tallinn Navesi's webinar. The webinar will be hosted by the chairman of the board, Carl Heine Brooks, and chief financial officer, Rina Kay. Firstly, Carl and Rina will introduce Tallinn Navesi's financial and operational results of the first nine months of 2018. And right after the presentation, we will open the floor for questions. I invite you all to use the question box on the right hand side of your screen to send in any questions you might have. All questions will be answered after the pre presentations. Now I will give it over to Carl Heine Brooks, please. Thank you, Elise, and good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining the Q3 uh, 2018 webinar today. As is usual, I'll give you a brief, brief update on our operational performance during the first nine months of this, this year. In, in summary, the operational performance of the company has been very good, uh, very proud of our results. Um, as you're all aware, the summer was extraordinarily hot this year and quite long. Uh, this meant we had to divert some water from one of our seldom used re reservoirs called Pankula. Pankula is quite a shallow reservoir, so moving that water across did cause some concern for the residents that live around the lake and indeed some of the businesses that operate there. Uh, this has now come to an end. The water is now being replenished into, into this lake, but that, as I said, did cause some concern and was even mentioned in the media. Um, moving on to our water quality. Um, so in the first nine months, the tap water quality remained very high, and we had a 99.91% compliance amongst the 2,236 samples taken. Um, only two samples exceeded the limit values, and that was related to iron content. Water losses in the distribution network were slightly higher than in the nine months of 2017. Still a very good figure, being 13.93% uh, compared to 13.52 in the same period last year. And this related to the longer and colder winter that we had, uh, had last year. Having a leakage rate that is under control is a testament to our investment program, the speed at which, which we repair bursts, and all the, also the effectiveness of our maintenance regimes. In the third quarter of 2018, the leakage level was at a good level, uh, being 13.6%. Uh, the final treated effluent that leaves our treatment plant at Palisar was also fully compliant with all the parameters listed in our water permit. Um, we work very hard to provide a high quality service to our customers. Um, in the nine months in the, of this year, the customers rated our service as 4.13 out of a scale of one to five. Um, before I move on to updating you on the tariff dispute, uh, I'd also like to share some success with respect to our wholly owned subsidiary, Watercom. Um, they recently received an award from Aripav and were listed as in 10th place out of 94 companies in Estonia, uh, something which we're, we're very proud of. Um, during the year, as you'll see when Rina discusses the figures later, Rotocom has shown some good growth during this year and also some good, good margin performance. So moving on to the tariff dispute, um, as always, a bit of an update and some history. So sadly, on the 12th of December last year, 2017, the Supreme Court rejected the company's cassation in relation to the ongoing tariff dispute. This now means that we're, we're under the competition authority in terms of regulation. And throughout this year, there has been a flurry of correspondence between both us and the competition authority as that tariff setting pro process continues. Um, I think we're coming towards the end of this process now, and we're expecting some result probably towards the end of this year. But again, we've got no certain dates as we sit and talk to you today. Um, some other news, on the 15th of May 2018, uh, we submitted an application to the European Court of Human Rights, claiming a breach uh, by Estonia of the company's right to a fair trial and protection of property. On the 23rd of October 2018, so just recently, the company received a decision from the European Court of Human Rights that the application is not admissible and that as such, the court will not continue proceedings concerning Talon of Aze's application. This decision is final and the company does not have a right to appeal this decision. 
This has also been covered in a recent stock exchange announcement, and you will see further further detail in there. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is as well, we do have parallel proceedings going on with regards to the international arbitration. And again, that was listed as one of the reasons why the European Court of Human Rights did not take the case on board. So I'll now move on to the international arbitration proceedings. Um, these are being held by the International Centre for Settlement of Investment Disputes. So after years of trying to negotiate a solution, the Supervisory Council of Tolnavesi decided to commence international arbitration proceedings against the Republic of Estonia for breach of the bilateral investment treaty between the Netherlands and the Republic of Estonia. On the 22nd of August 2018, which is a quite a recent development, the European Commission submitted an application for leave to intervene to this arbitration between Ace Talanavesi, uh, United Utilities, Talin BV, and the Estonian government as a non deputising party. The European Commission requested to intervene and make submissions to the arbitration limited to the judicial. Ju additional question of the possible legal consequences of the judgment of the ACMIA case. On the 2nd of October, the tribunal decided to satisfy the Commission's application in part. Namely, the Commissioners has, has invite, sorry, the arbitration panel has invited the Commission to submit a written document of up to 15 pages, uh, which was done on the 18th of October 2018. Both parties are now uh, filing comments to this submission, which and their comments must be submitted by the 1st of November 2018. The Tribunal rejected the Commission's request for access to the documents filed for the case and also attend any further hearings, as no such hearing is either scheduled or foreseen in the arbitration case. Um, the final arbitration for this uh, decision is expected sometime towards the end of the year. But at this moment in time, we have no fixed date for the final decision. So that sort of concludes the tariff update. It also concludes the operational update. I'm now going to hand you over to Rena who will take you through the financial performance of the business. Thank you. Thank you, Carl, and good morning to everyone. Now I would like to give you the overview of the financial performance of Oxyzel Stalin Navesi in the third quarter in 2018. After financial highlights, I will give more detailed overview about sales and costs. The performance of the group continues to be good. Total sales revenues were 7.6% or 1.16 million euros higher than in the third quarter in 2017. The sales of water and wastewater services increased by 3.5% or 0.44 million euros. There was also a solid increase of water comes pipe construction revenues of 44.5% or 0.77 million euros. The gross profit for the third quarter in 2018 was also higher by 0.3% or 0.02 million euros compared to the same period in 2017. The gross profit was impacted by higher revenues but also by higher staff and asset maintenance costs and lower electricity and depreciation costs. In the third quarter in 2018, the operating profit was 0.11 million euros lower than in the same period in 2017, being additionally uh, to gross profit uh, reasons affected by higher administrative and marketing expenses. Compared to the third quarter in 2017, the net profit of the company was 0.1 million euros higher, being in addition affected by lower financial expenses. Now let's move on to the next slides, and I will comment on the changes in revenues and the expenses a bit closer. Let's start from the sales. Total sales revenues for the third quarter of 2018 increased by 7.6% or 1.16 million euros. Total revenues from water and wastewater services were by 3.5% or 0.44 million euros higher than in the third quarter of 2017, amounting to 12.99 million euros. As we still operate with frozen tariffs, the change in water and wastewater revenues were solely driven by the consumption. As a result of the negative decision from the Supreme Court in December 2017, as Carl already mentioned, the company's tariffs will be regulated based on competition authorities' methodology. As per agreement, the company submitted its tariff application for Tallinn and Sauer areas at the end of February 2018. The competition authority reviewed it and asked the company to amend it to 
bring it fully compliant with their regulation. The amended application was submitted by the 2nd of May 2018 and the competition authority took the application into proceedings from the 4th of May 2018. The tariff application process is ongoing. The competition authority has extended the proceedings to uh, 90 days as the application is complicated. On 13th of September, the company submitted a supplemented tariff application additionally to Tallinn and Sao areas, also to Harko and surrounding areas water companies. The domestic consumption from Tallinn and Sao area increased compared to the same period in 2017 by 2.8% or 199,000 cubic meters to 7.1 million cubic meters. There was also an increase of 5.4% or 134,000 cubic meters in commercial sector consumption, which amounted to 2.5 million cubic meters. The increase in domestic sector came mainly from apartment blocks, which is our biggest customer group. The consumption in apartment blocks increased by 2.8%, supported by increase in individual houses water consumption by 13% as the summer was very dry. In commercial sector, the growth came mainly from industrial sector, supported also by other sectors. Total volumes from outside service area have also shown a decrease of 8.4% to 1.47 million Euro cubic meters compared to the comparative period in 2017, mainly from lower stormwater volumes balanced by higher water and wastewater volumes. Stormwater volumes from the main service area were lower by 46.4%. The revenues from construction and asphaltic services were 44.5% or 0.77 million euros higher, as mentioned already before, than in the third quarter in 2017. This now takes us to the costs. The total cost of goods sold in the third quarter of 2018 were higher by 16.7% or 1.13 million euros, amounting to 10.9 million euros. Direct main production costs have decreased by 3.7% or 61,000 euros, mostly due to low electricity costs, balanced slightly by higher chemical costs. Water abstraction charges increased by 4.6% to 0.3 million euros, driven mainly by overall 4.4% increase in abstracted water volumes. Chemical costs increased by 12.8% to 0.47 million euros, driven by on average 28.9% higher methanol price and lower usage of methanol coagulant to remove pollutants. Due to the hot weather and also poor uh, raw water quality, the usage of chlorine and coagulant in water treatment process were also higher. Electricity costs decreased by 13.5% to 0.63 million euros, driven by on average 11.8% lower electricity prices. Lower costs from prices were partly balanced by increase in electricity consumption in water treatment process. Pollution tax expenses decreased by 12.4% to 0.2 million euros, mainly due to 20.8% lower treated wastewater volumes, balanced by higher pollution load of pollutants. Construction and asphalting service costs increased in re relation to higher pipe construction and asphalting service revenues, which were mentioned earlier already. Increase in staff costs by 12.8% to 1.45 million euros, is related to correction of salaries by consumer price index in the beginning of the year and change in skilled worker salary system in 2017. Other costs of goods sold uh, increased by 54.6% to 1.34 million euros is related to high asset maintenance costs and disposal of sludge costs. Administrative and marketing costs increased by 7.2% to 1.19 million euros. It is related to correction of salaries by consumer price index, as mentioned before, and higher dispute related legal costs. Legal costs still will con uh, continue to affect the administrative costs up to the end of international dispute, the amount of which is dependent on work that needs to be put into the dispute. Net financial expenses have mostly been affected by the non-monetary revaluation of the fair value of the swap contracts, but also lower interest costs. It now takes us to the cash flows. 
The cash position as of 30th of September in 2018 is strong. The company's cash balance stood at 56.76 million euros, forming 23.3% of the total assets. Compared to the end of the third quarter in 2017, the cash balance has increased by 17 million euros. The biggest contribution to the cash flows comes from the main operations, as usual. The company's uh, collection of receivables continues to be high, being 99.7% on average. In nine months of 2018, net cash flows from investing activities resulted in a cash outflow of 4.1 million euros compared to the cash outflow of 4.2 million euros in the comparative period in 2017. The investments into fixed assets were lower by 0.5 million euros and the compensation for pipes were higher by 0.6 million euros. Biggest investments in 2018 have been related to dumps at a Gondi crossing and pipe reconstruction in Goinsbury Street. Finance and cash flows for nine months were lower mainly due to the lower dividend and dividend income tax payment. Thank you. Thank you to Rina Gay and uh, Carlena Brooks for the presentation. Now all of the attendees are invited to submit their questions. Please use the question box on the right-hand side of your screen to send in any questions. We currently haven't received any questions, so we will be waiting for a few minutes to allow you some time to submit your questions. So once again, if any of you happen to have questions to Carl Heine Brooks and Rina Gay, now is the time to submit them through the question box on the right hand side of your screen. We will be waiting for another minute and then we'll be concluding today's webinar. Thank you. So we have uh, received uh, two questions, both of uh, which have to do with the tariff application. I will be reading them out. Peter Prisail asks, um, what is the status of tariff negotiations with competition authorities? Carl Heiner Brooks, could you please answer that question? Yes, uh, sure. I, as mentioned earlier on in the, in the webinar, uh, the process has been going on throughout the year. Uh, and as Rena has mentioned, there's been a, a flurry of correspondence between both parties. At this moment in time, it, it's been classed as a complex tariff application, which means it can take up to 90 days. And as part of that process as well, it can be further delayed if there's requests for further information. Um, I would say that we're coming towards the end of the process now, but as we sit here today, we have no firm indication as to when we'll receive the next update from the competition authority, but I would expect that in the coming weeks. Thank you, Carl Heiner Brooks. Uh, so the other question regarding the uh, tariff application from Sander Danil uh, was, when exactly will the formal period for the application proceedings uh, by the CA end? When do you expect the decision? I believe that has yeah, already... Yeah, we don't, we don't have the exact date um, at this moment in time. I think the Competition Authority have been sending some correspondence to some of the surrounding municipalities which is probably adding to them some further delays as well in, in sort of finalising our application. 
Thank you, Karl-Heiner Brooks. We have uh, also received a third question uh, from Sander Daniel. In case TVE is not satisfied with the decision, how do you plan to proceed with the dispute? Okay, I'm, I'm assuming this relates to the CA or is it related to ICSID? Uh, assuming it's related to the Competition Authority in Estonia, I think when we do receive their decision, we have a decision to make as a company as to whether we accept um, or, or we don't accept. And then we, we can go into another another process, uh, which I think is, is quite common uh, for other utilities in Estonia who don't agree with what the Competition Authority first say. Uh, for me to speculate on what that will look like at this moment in time is, is impossible. Thank you, Carl Hina Brooks. Um, we haven't received any uh, other questions, but uh, once again, I will allow a bit more time for you to submit uh, additional questions. So please type them in in the question box. Okay, we received another question from Peter Prisheim. Can you please provide some guidance at what level the new tariff could be set? Would it be significantly different from the levels indicated at the time when competition authority took over the regulatory role? Vina Kay, please. Thank you for the question. Uh, at this very point of time, it's premature to uh, assume what the uh, tariff would be. The tariff application that we submitted went too different from the tariffs we are operating currently, but the final determination is uh, the result of the negotiations between the company and the competition authority. So currently it's uh, too early to say what the exact tariff would be. Thank you, Rina Kate. Um, another question has been submitted. Sander Daniel asks, the profitability of Watercom is rather low. Do you expect it to remain on that level? Okay, I'll, I'll pick this one up. Yeah, we, we're very happy with Watercom. Over the last few years, we've seen some significant growth in their external sales. And as I mentioned before now, they're one of the 10th largest infrastructure construction companies in Estonia. Um, as we've always said, we, we're very cautious about the way that we grow Watercom. I don't think it's ever going to replace the regulated business, and we've got to be very careful that we don't create trouble for the major, you know, for the major business as a result of their activities. So, we're very careful on the projects that we bid. We're very cautious about the risks that are being taken. Um, so, I d in answer to the question, I don't think that Watercom's profits are going to significantly grow. It's just going to be slow and sustainable growth in the coming years. Thank you, Carl Hönebrooks. Um, so, as we've uh, gotten quite a few questions, uh, we will wait for a, a tiny bit longer to see if any, any of you want to ask uh, anything else. So, please feel free to ask your questions. We've gotten another question from Sander Daniel. Is the main question regarding tariff application still concerning the regulated asset base, which would be the basis for calculating acceptable tariffs? Rina Kay, please. As already, uh, it has been discussed the differences uh, publicly between the tariff methodology in uh, services agreement and also the tariff methodology um, applied by the competition authorities. Those are very, very different. 
as you're very well aware of. And there are different uh, subjects and different areas we are talking over and we're going through, uh, which I wouldn't go into detail right now because of the result of those discussions haven't ended yet. Thank, Thank you, Rina. Okay. So if um, any of you has uh, another uh, question, please uh, submit, submit them right now as we will be ending the webinar soon. Okay, seems like we don't have any, any more questions. So thank you uh, for participating. Thanks again for Carl Heine Brooks and Rina Kay for the presentation. I would like to point out that the recording of the presentation will be available uh, in the Nasdaq Baltic YouTube channel webinar playlist very shortly, and the presentation materials and reports can be found on Tallinn Avesi's webpage. Thank you again for everybody. Have a good day. Thank you all and thank you very much for your questions today also. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.